I was like having nightmares of like falling down the face. I felt pretty confident he was going to be able to ride it safely or maybe survive. I kind of feel like this whole project is paying off right now. <laughs> The goal is to ski better than ever. When I landed there, there was this huge warmth. But the local snow has turned into an avalanche trap that has already claimed four lives. The problem lies down here, this sugary kind of snow. Yeah, that's definitely sketchy. This snow means we're going south. Austria is experiencing the snowfall of the decade, but the goal is also to emit less CO2 than ever. So getting there is the challenge. Leaving Norway means cutting the lifeline to GE's clean energy because my home on the road, Obi Van, runs on diesel. Which my climate consultant explains is no better than flying. Driving alone and flying is roughly equal. Erik and Christer share Christer's car down. It was a long drive. I had a caffeine overdose that was horrible. So their emissions end up half of mine, but my co-pilot understandably ditches me for an airplane. First time I've seen the sun in a month. Feels pretty good to be heading south. I do find one way to lower my emissions a bit though. So I just ran my gas tank all the way down to empty, trying to reach this station where I can fill second generation biofuel diesel. This is non-food, rainforest friendly, carbon neutral fuel. Help my footprint a bit here. A small thing, but it works. And I stopped by Infinitum, where these are given eternal life, and recycle this can. But I'll get back to that later. Then we made it. That was pretty sweet. It was just shred from that day on. Okay, Krister. Yeah, Nico D. You ready to get deep? Peed it. Peed it, bro. Holy! It's so good. Woo! insane. I've never seen this much snow in the Alps before. I kind of feel like this whole project is paying off right now. It's like Japan, but it's actually steep and no people. Yeah, we had uh, resorts with uh, mostly like families. So we had the forest for ourselves, like steep forests, long runs. Plus. We got Benjamin, Benny the Beast, came all the way from Norway just to send it. Hey Benny, what are you doing up there? Something stupid. He's gonna go from up there and all the way down there. How many times are you gonna flip? Twice. Oh my god. Klar, yeah. hallo. Okay, drop it! Holy! I have never seen anything like that. This is the age-old migration of the Scandinavian ski bum. Every year since I finished high school, the routine has been work all fall, ski all winter, based in Alaska, France, and Canada. But for Christer and Erik, this is the first. It feels really good just working all of the fall. And right now I'm done working, so we will go down to the Alps and shred all winter. I'm a lineman. 
we build power lines all over Norway. So working in mountains, remote places, yeah, it's nice. We always work outside. Um, I'm doing the thing I love most this winter, snowboarding, for the first time in my life. <laughs> I feel like the snow gods are giving back, not flying and skiing better snow than I skied last year. It's trivial compared to flying halfway across the world, driving a huge truck to a mountain, and riding a snowmobile up it. But we're still burning carbon to ride. Arian informs me a day riding lifts in Austria emits about six kilos of CO2. And like the place we live, we need to drive almost an hour every day for where we're we going to shred. As much as I love Cruzy Pau, with the goal of slashing my CO2 emissions by two thirds, I all of a sudden have to start budgeting. Is that day riding really worth it? Will it make my video park better? The plan was to travel slower, spend more time in each location and wait for good conditions to ride. So roll into Austria and randomly bump into my team buddy Roman here. What yeah. are the conditions like? Conditions are... Uh... The problem is just that the conditions are awesome all the time. And you can access this terrain straight from a lift. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah, dude. Sick. Like Innsbruck doesn't have too many resorts really close by, but if you have a car and you have the season pass, you have over 90 different resorts to choose from. You can always get good snow almost. I'm curious to see Benjamin in Arcolar. If he'll just send it from the top or if he'll actually ski it. <laughs> you can see the people below the coolars traversing. Yeah, they're tiny. That's a big thing. It is a big thing. <laughs> Two big things. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> Pretty nervous actually. Yeah. yeah. You got this, you're the sand man. <laughs> oh, what do you think about snow, Christer? Variable conditions, yeah. Yeah. I'm hot just like an oven. It's hot. So Benjamin will ski from here, but I will continue to the top. Yeah, have fun. Yeah, you too. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man. Okay, Christopher dropping in five, four, three, two, one. Whoa. Don't wanna be all by myself. I'm ready. Okay, Jonas is ready and Eric is dropping in three, two, one, Eric dropping.
Rot. Ja, rot. Ha, ist gut. Topside, boys. Pretty good. It's freaking sweet. More like bittersweet. Riding this beautiful couloir in amazing powder. Because my mom could have done it too. I need to ski terrain that'll win the vote of the Norwegian skiing community in Oslo this fall. But to access that, avalanche conditions, snow, and weather needs to be perfect. It's the ski bumps waiting game. Ah, uh, we're living right outside the town. Feel like we're we're actually adults now. Except we're living four people in a one-person apartment. Yeah. We were six people the first week. Nikolai slept in his uh, OB van. We put Jonas on, on the porch. Good morning, Jonas. Good morning. Hey, Jonas, how do you feel about the bombs? It's a classic case of it's supposed to be sunny, but it's not. And we are in Albanaska, and it's looking kind of scary in this flat light. I actually wanted to ride the big one today, but the boy said it was too sketchy, so we're waiting till Thursday. It's kind of hard, like all the locals are saying, oh, it's not filled in yet. And the line I want to ride right now is pretty exposed, and there's a big cliff you have to air. So we'll see what happens here when we come back. But today is just a warm up. It's getting sunny down there. There's the sun. You're getting light. You're getting light. Gotta have a sandwich. Run to the top. Get it. Okay, guys, I'll have a lot of cool nits there. This is so good as it's going. It's so different because usually I ride like in the couloirs and stuff because that's where the snow is. But now you can ride on top of the spine things and it's really fun. Christer is physically the biggest snowboarder alive. So he's been just launching and sending massive tricks and it's been really cool to watch. Okay, drop it. Buenos, Rados. We finally scored big time, but the main prize still awaits. I've never ridden a mountain like that before. This could be it. I might actually reach my goal of riding better than last season. Hey Thorstein, how are you? Good, how's your eco project? Yeah, you know, it's going pretty good actually. Yeah, hey, did you ever consider how insignificant your emissions really are, like compared to, I don't know, coal? Yeah. I mean, what you're doing is great, but wouldn't it be better to just keep on flying while lobbying for shutting down a coal plant or two? It would. An average coal plant emits more CO2 than 200,000 pro skiers do in a year. We need large scale societal change to halt global warming. But it starts and ends with myself. I realized this when I stopped by Infinitum on my way down here. Saving winter doesn't necessarily look like eco chai latte hemp blanket van life mornings. It can look like this huge factory that gives cans and bottles eternal life. And there's no reason we can't find similar solutions for the rest of our issues. But I need to vote for the people that strive for solutions like this. And when the solutions are in place, I have to actually recycle every can, buy that recycle jacket, choose that certified green power, 
In the big picture, they might be insignificant actions, but there's no one that'll do them for me. Like the little pack up here. None of the guys wanted to come. I wonder why. Looks maybe even a bit bonier than last time we were here. Let's give it a go. Pitch the tent. Gentlemen's camp. Making a little home for ourselves here. When I went to sleep, I was like having nightmares of like falling down the face. I was like, oh no, oh no, like why am I doing this? It's pretty cold. <laughs> Dawn is breaking. See you on the other side. I was having the nightmares of the face being as bony as everyone claims, hitting rocks as I enter, sending me over the exposure below. And if it's not too rocky, I'll still have to race my slough to not be pulled over that same exposure. I'd be lucky to walk away just injured. I want this mountain, but I also really want to turn back. Feels pretty good. Um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go for it. Five, four, three, two, one. drop in. Oh man, at some point, I thought I was going to do it. But it worked out. <gasps> I think that should work for the vote in Oslo. And I managed to get my emissions down to roughly a 14 ton yearly average. So I might be able to reach my climate goals this spring. Dude, I'm so happy we went. Thanks for supporting me through this. Come in for the hike. <laughs> <laughs> 